Hi, I'm Jonathan from EveryPoint, and today I'm going to show you how to make a 3D model using Nerf Studio. We're going to make both a point cloud and a textured mesh using a Nerf. Now, I get a lot of questions. How do I make a 3D model out of a Nerf? And that has been something you haven't been able to do until recently. And so I'm going to walk you through it. It's not a lot of steps, and I'm assuming you already know how to train a Nerf using Nerf Studio. So if you don't, put in the comments if you don't know how to, and I'll be happy to make that video in the future if there's enough people asking for it. But we assume you already know how to use Nerf Studio, at least at a beginner level. Uh, along with this, I'm also recording a second video tomorrow, which I will put in the notes once it's recorded and put out on YouTube but I am going to compare photogrammetry against 3D model outputs from Nerf because a lot of people have been asking for that and there's a lot of education around that. So I hope you like this tutorial and if you like this sort of content, please subscribe to the channel and in the future, leave any comments of sort of videos that you want to see and we'll try to make those happen. So let's get to it. Okay, I'm on the Nerf Studio webpage where it has all the guides and how to do everything. And really, you can probably figure this out yourself, but if you've never really used Nerf Studio beyond making a Nerf, I'm just gonna walk you through how to do it and how to follow their instructions. And I already have one running right now, so it'd be ready to go by the end of this video. So the first thing you need to do is you go over where it says using custom data, and I'm gonna start building a script. In fact, I'm going to create a new command prompt, a new Anaconda window here. And again, if you haven't done this in a while, first thing you need to do is start the Anacon or the sorry the Nerf Studio um, environment that you have set up. So um, you do conda activate Nerf Studio, and then you're gonna want to change directory to whoever your Nerf Studio directory is, and you're ready to go. So now we're gonna start building the commands on some images you have that you want to turn into a point cloud. So for example, I have this folder here. And I have a bunch of source images from a drone of this Tacoma dome. And I want to turn this into a point cloud and a mesh. It's from a drone. It's great. And so I just know that's in the Nerf Studio folder and data. And I call it T-Dome, short for uh, the Tacoma dome. It's going to minimize this. And then I'm going to go here for training your own data. And the first thing you want to do is you're going to just process that data. And so you're just going to go to NS, process data. You're going to control paste that in there. And then it's going to ask, do you want images or videos? So we're going to type in images. And then I'm going to go dash dash data. And then where's the path? So it's data forward slash uh, T dome. And then I had put all those images in a source folder. So I'm just kind of saying, OK, so in this, the data is in this folder. And then I need an output directory, output dash dir. And then there, I'm just going to put it again in that same Tacoma dome subfolder I made. T dome like that. I'm not actually going to run this, but what this will do is start the processing of this data using coal map. So just that's what you do. Nothing special here. I'm not going to kick it off. It's already been done. Now I want to make a point cloud and a mesh and point cloud. You don't need what's called normals, but you do for a mesh and uh, reading through this, it kind of talks about how to do that. If you go and you're exporting a mesh, exporting a point cloud, it's not a lot of instructions here, but you don't really need a lot. I just know that um, I trained it with meshes on when I did this, and they give you basically the line to do that. So it's this, it says train your facto with network settings that predict normals. And they just give you the line right here. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it in here. And then um, I need to tell it where the data is. And then I have this data slash T dome folder, and then I'll hit enter. And I've actually already did that. So if I go to this, I actually already kicked that off. So if I go up a little higher here, you'll see that I kicked this off saying, um, make this a little bigger for everyone, where I said NS train nerfacto dash dash pipeline dot model dot predict dash normals true, then dash dash data data T dome. So Sounds complicated. I still a lot of copying and pasting. The only thing you really put in there was this, where's the path to folder? And if you use, never use command line, that could get a little confusing, but um, hopefully it's not too bad. Uh, and once it's done, it'll start, it'll kick off. So if I make this a little bigger, it'll see, you saw this on your screen, might look a little different depending on what your uh, anaconda looks like. 
but uh, it'll what it will start doing is it'll kick off and you will get a link to a, a URL viewer right here. And it'll probably be a little bit smaller window for you guys. So it'll probably look like this. If you just hold control and click on that you know, on the latest Windows 11, that'll just launch the viewer. I actually already have that running in my screen and it's been training. The reason why I kicked this off before is because I want it to be mostly trained. And so if I, I zoom in here and click on this, well, you'll see I have that dome building underneath training. And that's what we want. And it actually will load up in this screen right here. So I think it'll be kind of gray. And so as you can see, this is a great data set for making a 3D model with photogrammetry. It's got this crisscross pattern. Um, and then it's got an orbit to get kind of the, so the sides of the structure. This is kind of like a standard mapping um, flight plan that you'd have. And so I'm in here and I don't care about rendering a video. I want to get the 3D data. So this has been training for a while. If I go back and I look at this, it'll tell me, okay, I'm at 69, almost 70%. And that's great. So it's it's probably already trained fully. It's 21,000 um, steps. That's great. So I'm going to go to this export here and it's going to show this bounding box. And then everything's under there. Um, I can constrict this bounding box, but this bounding box is what will be exported. So first I'm going to do a point cloud. And so for the point cloud, you pick how many points. It's defaulted to a million. That's a lot of points. If you're doing a really small object, that's too many. Um, but a million, let's make that, that's great for this. Let's leave it as a million. Remove your outliers so that I'll just kind of like get rid of all the noise. Estimate normals. Turn that on if you know what normals are and you want to turn this into a mesh later yourself. That's what normals are useful for. And then crop. That's this box here. I can turn this on and off. Does it crop what you want? And yes, we do. So for the crop, um, I think you can grab this Z and pull the, the top down. Um, I think actually might, I think this just moves the center, I just realized. It actually doesn't move the crop box, but um, we're gonna wanna like kind of crop this down a little bit if we can, let's see how we can do that. Oh, I think the crop is actually on the scale. So let's make the Z, there we go. We're gonna bring the Z down like that. I want to make sure I'm not cropping the actual dome. And again, it can be hard to see. So I'd say hide these cameras. So hide images. And you want to make sure everything we want is in this kind of yellow. And um, again, it's hard to see it, but it looks like it's in there. A little tip, if you go to controls, we can make this like slow and look a little better when you're not moving around. But okay, so now we got that. Go to export. I think it's all captured. And again, we I, I made the Z scale smaller. The the X and Y will make the box more of a rectangle versus a square. I'm happy with this, but we just don't need to render things above the camera plane because it didn't capture anything. So if I show those images again, you know, I can bring it even further down. And it does look like this whole thing's tilted a little bit. I'm not gonna worry about that. So just maybe like that, and then bring this down. All right, I'm happy with that. So it's not going to render anything or try to make a point. So I think anything above that. And I'm just showing you guys how to do this, uh, but not being perfect. It tells you the directory is going to be in. So it's that like root directory that we're working in into the exports PCD folder. Um, and then you have this command. And it's going to copy this command. And I'm going to open up Notepad++. You can open any sort of note editor. I'm going to create a new note. And I'm just going to paste that in there. And that's where it's going to give you like those variables I just put in. So estimate normal is true and all those things, number of points. Um, and then uh, I don't know where it calls the name of this. So it just might already pick that for you. So I'm not going to actually run this yet. I'm just going to leave that there. And I know that's for point clouds. And I'm going to make a new one for mesh. So for mesh, stick what they say, the best, Poisson. Uh, it's the best meshing they have. Normal options, you should have the normals. We already told it to start training those normals with the way I show you how to kick this off. Number of faces and the text resolution, number of points, a million points. I'm just gonna leave this all default just because we're just trying to see how this works. Remove outliers, crop, that's all perfect. And it looks like it didn't save our crop settings. Or maybe it did. Everything looks good inside this box. So I'll just leave this as is. Copy that command as well and just put it in here. Perfect. And so now all we should be able to do is stop the training 
and we're uh, 78%. That's pretty good. So I'm just going to hit Control C, and that will kill whatever's happening in the training. So I killed the command line, and now I know it's done after I hit Control C, and you just see your user's root folder for Nerf Studio. So that's perfect. That's what I want. And I'm just going to go to my notepad again. We're going to start with point clouds. So I'm just going to grab this top point cloud line and just paste it in here. That way you don't have to type anything in yourself. Hit enter, and it should start automatically creating the point cloud. So now it's showing on my screen. If I pump up the size of this, uh, computing the, the point cloud, 100%. I don't think it takes very long. So now it does some cleaning and saving. The longest might be saving. And finished when the saving point cloud stops and you see again, the command prompt pull up. So I'm gonna open this up and I should see the new point cloud in there. Okay, so here's the point cloud. It's been cropped out of that box. And uh, you see there's a little bit of outlier still on floating on the top. I didn't constrict that all the way down. And there you go. It's a point cloud. It's not perfect looking, but wow, that was easy. And you think how fast it's trained. Um, I had this all done in about 15 minutes. So next up, let's check out the meshes. So I'm going to go back to my notepad and copy this bottom line and put it in my command prompt and hit enter. So there it is. It's loading up some of the data. It's caching all the images and loading this checkpoint. From there, it's computing a point cloud. I'm just going to fast forward this video and we're going to see the output mesh. Okay, it looks like it's done. It says it saved all the different files to the exports mesh folder. So if I go to the exports folder into mesh, okay, there I go. I see the material library, the materials, a mesh and a Poisson mesh.py. Okay, so let's open up the, the mesh.obj first and take a look at it. Okay, so it's 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 not perfect at all. Um, but hey, it's a mesh. And again, I did tell it to decimate it quite a bit. If I click in here, I can turn off the normals and <laughs> hides a lot of that geometry. So that's that's an interesting thing. So this this looks a whole lot better as to show that off. But in reality, if I show the normals, which kind of shows your shading and everything, the top is not smooth. And if anyone's been to this structure, they know that's not how it's shaped. In fact, it looks like there's a big chunk taken out over here. So uh, very interesting. Um, well, I'm just going to take a look at the other full, uh, Poisson mesh PLY as well. So again, I don't think this one's been optimized. Uh, let's see here. It's got its normals. Okay, yeah, this looks like a much bigger file. So this one hasn't been um, turned into a uh, more optimized mesh with less triangles. And again, what happens if I turn off the normals? It hides everything. But again, we know that's, that's not what it's supposed to look like. Okay, so that's how you make a mesh in a point cloud using Nerf Studio. I uh, hope this was somewhat helpful. I think for smaller objects, this actually might be somewhat useful. So put in the comments if there's anything that seemed confusing here. I always like to jump into the YouTube comments and help people out and point them in the right direction. And also do know that Nerf Studio has a very, very robust Discord channel where everyone is helping everyone out. So if you do have questions, I might be able to answer them. But I also want you to let to know there is some really smart people in there that know the coding part way more than I do can really help you out with those hard questions that I might not be able to answer. So subscribe to this channel if you found it useful. I will be posting more Nerf content in 2023 and showing you some things as they evolve. Um, I also leave a comment if you found this very useful. It definitely means a lot to me. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to jump in there and see you in the next video.